Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Play on GAA podcast. Today, we are beginning a new series of championship previews for each inter-county side and starting today with a preview of Antrim football for 2022. And I have Luke and Ryan here from the Saffron Voice here to join me. How's it going, lads? Not too bad. How are you? All good, yeah. Very good. Looking forward to the new season, lads? Yep, myself personally looking forward to the season now after being promoted from Division 4 certainly it's getting hopes up now for, for this season coming in and just written, sitting ready, written, ready to go like Yeah, I, I just can't wait till the first team sheet comes in for the Dr. McKenna Cup next Wednesday night so we're, we're buzzing up here so we are Yeah, definitely and talk to me then about you know obviously the first season with McGinley you know, you're getting a main, obviously, bit of an unknown quantity as a manager, but as a player, you know, three-time All-Ireland winner and an All-Star winner with Tyrone. How were you feeling when he kind of got the job initially? Were you expecting big things or has he kind of over-delivered so far? Well, I think whenever he first came in, you know, sort of, we didn't really know what to expect because, as you said, there is, there's not really much managerial, um, so there's not much of a CV there from a from manager point of view, but certainly he's come in and he's, He's brought new players in and he's he's brought the old fellas back and you know he got them performing well in division four and they won matches and maybe by maybe by a point or so. And years ago Antrim were sort of losing them games. So to even have that uh, mindset, I think McGinley's brought this mindset in from the county that, you know, you can win matches and that's you know, we've seen three days throughout division four, you know, they've won most of their matches and they beat Waterford and far far field like and certainly it's it's been it's been a joy so far and looking forward to division three as I said and hopefully there's there's a blueprint now I keep saying it over on our podcast there there's a blueprint now for, for success and it's just where he can get his first championship one now for uh, for this season as well. Yeah, no, that's definitely the next step for McGinley is to get that championship victory. But obviously, unfortunately, you are in the awkward position of being in the Ulster Championship. But before we talk about the actual Ulster Championship of next season, the Division 4 promotion and everything like that, obviously not getting to play a final against Loud, I think he's with the best team in Division 4 last season. I think he would have beat Loud if there was a provincial final. But to you, what were the big changes you noticed in McGinley's team you know, obviously you had players coming back, as you mentioned, like Paddy Cunningham came back into the side. You had Michael McCann there as well. But what were the big kind of changes you noticed in the panel from 2021 compared to previous seasons? I think um, just the cohesion. See, up here, we would be sort of like Derry. A lot of boys would commit more to their clubs. And I see it like a lot more boys maybe putting their hand up more to represent the county. And, you know, just getting promoted last year, He's just out of complete freshness to the whole thing, so I can't wait to see what he gets on like this year. Uh, another thing to mention there too is, um, you know, he brought in the likes of these young fellas, Connor Stewart from All Saints Ball. I mean, he, you know, was totally unexpected, you know, because me and myself, me and me and Ryan, they were talking there saying Connor Stewart, like none of us have heard tell of him before. I know, sort of, of he went to school with me, like he was a couple years younger, but you never thought that you'd get in the county panel, like he was. It was sort of like a, so as it were, you know, it was a young lad from, from Balmina, but he, he made himself known throughout the Division 4 campaign. And, you know, he's a big, strong lad from Balmina. And certainly players like that help um, help with the team going forward as well. You know, that that youth, um, you know, bleeding new players in, it certainly helps something going forward, I think, as well. Yeah, without doubt. And I think the fruits of the labour were kind of shown in the Armagh game. I mean, I know that they did eventually go down, but they went down fighting against Armagh, a Division One side, you know, and a team that do have All-Ireland aspirations and quality players like the O'Neill brothers and all up front. Antrim, in that game, they were huge underdogs, but I think they performed very, very well. And obviously this year now, going in against Cavan, who will be playing in Division Four below Antrim, even though Cavan won the Ulster Championship a couple of seasons ago, Cavan definitely have it in them to drop the ball in a certain game. And I think Antrim, I think he should be eyeing up that game as a potential scalp. 100%. We were actually talking about this in our own podcast. And I rewatched the Armand uh, match back. And one thing, I know people won't like really take much notice of this, but how comfortable Antrim actually were in possession that first half. We've never really seen Antrim like, We'd be more like seeing them with, working on like a hot potato sort of thing. But McGinley, I think, just breeds the confidence in them. Like, 
everybody's a good footballer in this say like just keep I know it's it's not good to look at like but just holding on to possession for like two or three minutes you know the way Dublin would do side to side sort of starve the opposition of the ball and I definitely think we'll be going into this Calvin this Calvin game especially if we have a good league campaign that if uh, if we don't go down anyway like that we can definitely I wouldn't even say it as a scalp because I said that to look like I don't think beating Calvin would be a scalp so yeah I think it's going to be interesting to you is because you know you said you know Calvin's going in Division 4 and certainly they wouldn't see themselves as a Division 4 team you know they'd be wanting to come straight back up again Division 3 and uh, as you mentioned before they won the Ulster Championship two years ago and they'll be they'll be uh, they were the wounded animal as they say um you know, but I think if, as Ryan said there, if one of them do get a good Division 3 campaign under their belts, then they will be looking forward to this Calvin match without a doubt. Consider if it's at home as well, certainly then they'll be raring to go for that match. And in the McGinley will bring that mindset into their players that, uh, you know, this this is a game we can win. Certainly in the back of that, our match last year, you know, as Ryan said, it was a brilliant first half performance. It's just, it's just building upon that now, where to see a match out and actually get over that finishing line now. Yeah, I agree. And I do think that Antrim will stay in Division 3 this year. I think they just have too much momentum behind them. And I look at teams like Longford and Loud. Obviously, I know Loud came up as well, but I don't think they have as much behind them as Antrim do. I think Antrim have, as you mentioned, a really good crop of young lads there that seem to have found their confidence overnight with McGinley. And I think they'll survive in Division 3. And then that brings them on to the Championship, where, of course... I definitely think they could beat Cavan because, as we mentioned, Cavan have it in them to drop the absolute ball with it. You know, going forward in the championship, I think the Talton Cup, if they don't make the provincial final, I think the Talton Cup could be a very, very realistic goal for Antrim this season. If certain teams stay out of the Talton Cup, if, you know, your Kildares stay out of it or whatever, I think Antrim might actually be very strong dark horses because... You mentioned yourself about how calm and comfortable they were on the ball against Armagh. Their confidence is only going to grow, especially if they stay in Division 3. And, yeah, they could be an outside bet to win the Talton Cup this year. Yeah, um, personally, for me, I, I've said this, uh, I think Andy McGinley is probably the best manager we've had since Liam Baker Bradley about 10 years ago. and I, I just can't wait. And talking about the Talton Cup, it is Division 3 and Division 4 sides, and the two teams who go up, I think one of them would be West Meath. And, uh, like, I would expect Antrim to beat anybody in Division 4 this year. I know Calvin and Tip will be in it, but, um, like you said, I think there will be a dark horse. And, like, I just, like, I seen there the day that you, you play every week, like, and just, like you said about that momentum, just playing every week. And it would get a following. And, like, the Tilton Cup final will be at Croke Park and it'll be a great day out for the county. So, I really hope we can do well in the Tilton Cup if we don't get to the provincial final. <laughs> yeah, without doubt. And as Antrim fans, which one would you actually prefer? Because obviously there is the much celebrated side of 2009, obviously with the likes of Cunningham and Michael McCann and James Lockery was in that team as well before he went to Cork. But would you rather get to a provincial final or would you rather play in the Tilton Cup and have an outside bet at winning it? I think... I think- Obviously, you'd rather be in an Ulster in an Ulster final. Certainly, you know, with the caliber of players we have, and certainly, although Ulster is a very competitive championship, as you mentioned before, but I think we'd rather be in an Ulster in a professional final. But push comes to shove, you know, Tottenham Cup is definitely up there. You know, as Ryan mentioned, you play the likes of Division Three and Division Four teams, and we can beat anyone, no doubt, in Division Four. I know Calvin and Tipperary, as Ryan said as well. But you know, you play these sides in Division Three. Then you get to know what their state of play is. I know the league is definitely is definitely uh, different to the to the championship. Like, and certainly if you get to know these teams and you, you get a bit of homework done on them, then you know what to expect for the Tottenham Cup. I think um, it's it's just where you're getting over that first hurdle of Calvin. And then you play the winners of Donegal or Malik, and then as you said, all bets are off. Then um, if you do beat Calvin, then they're going in as underdogs for the provincial championship. But again, push comes to shove. You know, Tottenham Cup is is probably probably. Uh, a good goal for them the, for this for this uh, meantime. Yeah, no doubt. And just obviously before we come up to the McKenna Cup, obviously Antrim season is just about to officially kick off. As fans, which players would you be kind of telling people listening to this now to keep an eye on as we enter the new season? Well, for me, um, 
I've seen big Pat Shivers on is on the squad now, and I think if Kevin Small can get a, an injury free season, I think he played very well for his club there, Kickham's Craig, and I think he was the best player against Clan Aaron too. So, and with a few new boys in the panel there, you've Jimmy McCann from Craig as well, and big Rui McCann's back in the panel from Mahagallon. So, who do you like? Who do you think look will be? Yeah, um, certainly as Ryan mentioned, you know, you've got the likes of them boys from. Craig. Craig and Kevin Small, you know, he's, he was the player of the year for up and throughout the championship. And uh, certainly Connor Stewart as well, you know, we've seen him last year as well. But, you know, certainly with a year on his belt for Upham, you know, we'll certainly bring him on uh, leaps and bounds for, for this year as well. Uh, a lot of, I would like to, I don't I don't know myself who's in the panel for the McKenna Cup, but I would like, I, I can't wait to see who's on the panel. Um, certainly for me, I think, you know, Walsh, if he can get in that panel, then, Absolutely, just he's he's been absolutely unreal. We've been talking about him on this podcast for for ages now, and he's just been unbelievable. He scored one seven in the championship semi final from play. I mean, or was it seven points actually, if I'm not mistaken? One seven. One seven. He scored um, an absolute unbelievable performance from you know Walsh, and certainly he's he's come a long way. Um, so I think if you have Jimmy McCann and uh, Rory McCann from Craig and Ahagyal, then certainly we'll be looking forward to see them players in the in the jersey as well. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, some of my personal favourites over the last years of watching Antrim, I've always liked Patrick McBride from St. John's. I've always liked Mark Sweeney as well. He, you know, has a big impact in the Dublin Championship. He's played midfield yeah. for Jude's and he played centre half back in the Championship as they made the final of the Dublin Championship once again. I mean, there are two names. And obviously a game changer now. I'm not 100% sure of a situation, but I know that he did leave the panel a few years ago. Matthew Fitzpatrick. I mean, he's a fantastic footballer. I haven't really heard much about him since. Do you know what his situation is? Yeah, I think he's actually playing for a few uh, Irish soccer teams up here, that like Corian and Van Aven. He just can't commit to the county. But yeah, I remember that day we played loud in the qualifiers and he just absolutely destroyed them. Like He's just complete Rolls Royce of a forward leg. Like. I would like to see him back in the county squad, like, but we'll, just, we'll see. Like. Yeah, well, if definitely if anyone can convince him to come back, it seems to be McGinley because he definitely has a good wave of momentum there in Antrim. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how they get on in this season, lads. Thanks for coming on today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. No worries. All right, guys, that is the end of this episode of the Play on GA podcast. Keep an eye out for all our other previews of the other county seasons in 2022. And until the next episode, guys, take care.